Good evening and welcome to the Gun Automotive Group pregame show here at the Alamo Dome. Gun Automotive, where buying your next vehicle is real simple. It's UTSA and Southern. Good evening, everybody. I'm Don Harris along with Chuck McAtinick. Chuck, after what has to be the biggest win in program history at Baylor, these UTSA Roadrunners now have their home opener after week one against Houston was a washout. Oh, yeah, that was really the most curious thing to me last week was you get your home opener wiped out, then you got to go into Waco, play a Big 12 team, and this was an offense. Let's not forget these Baylor Bears that were averaging roughly 37 points a ball game last year. UTSA stones them, only 10 points, and quite frankly, the Bears were lucky to get that. So just a dominating performance by UTSA and their defense a week ago. The defense was fantastic, and so was Dalton Sturm, the UTSA quarterback. He beat the Bears both with his arm and with his feet, and more impressively, they didn't turn it over. No, and that was the biggest thing in talking to Coach Wilson this week. I mean, he managed the game very well, did exactly what they wanted him to do, but look at that, darn near perfect passer rating. 15 to 20 in the air, and quite frankly, he had a couple drops in those five incompletes. And then he had almost another 100 yards rushing the ball. So Southern's going to have their hands full with this dual threat quarterback tonight. Southern is coming off a win over South Carolina State, but they lost to Southern Miss in week one, and they lost in more ways than one. Their starting quarterback, Austin Howard, out with a knee injury. And so today they will turn to this freshman, Darquez Lee. Yeah, it's tough to replace a three-year starter. And Austin Howard, their starter, got banged up in the first week. Well, Darquez Lee... The Southern coaches felt like he showed up better of the two freshman quarterback. But, you know, there's really a good chance, Don, that we're going to see not only Dark was in this game, but Glennon McDaniel as well. Southern already through two weeks of the season is dealing with the injury bug like you wouldn't believe. So they got a lot of moving parts today. Heavy underdogs here, but Coach Frank Wilson has a lot of respect for this Southern program. Our Mike Lefko on the sidelines with the coach. Uh, well, first of all, we got to get the first one. We were able to obtain that and get the first victory, and uh, we want to improve ourselves to 2-0, and the only way we can do that is through uh, repeated behavior, proper preparation for a quality opponent. And so uh, we have our sights set on, on Southern University. Uh, we put a dot on it, and uh, we're locked in, and we're prepared to, to play a good game today. All right, when we come back, it's the keys to victory both for UTSA and for Southern when the Gun Automotive Group pregame show continues. Welcome back to the Alamo Dome, everybody. It's UTSA and Southern. Roadrunner fans are fired up, but now it's time for Guns. Real simple, keys to victory, brought to you by the Gun Automotive Group. Chuck? Yeah, Don, for the Jags, first of all, they want to survive the first quarter. That's exactly what they didn't do a week ago, where they gave up 28 in the opening frame against Southern Miss. Secondly, they don't want to beat themselves, and they want to match the physicality of UTSA. As for the Roadrunners, hey, they don't want to get too overconfident. I know it's hard to or hard not to coming off of the Baylor win, but they got to bring it back down. This is another week. And then secondly, quick starts on both sides of the ball and then finish drives. Do not settle for three today. It's UTSA, their home opener, taking on the Southern Jaguars. We'll have the kickoff when we come back. Welcome back to the Alamo Dono, everybody. We're about ready to kick it off. UTSA will be kicking to Southern right now. It's time for tonight's game time condition conditions. They're brought to you by John Wayne Service Company, San Antonio's home service company. And the conditions are perfect. 72 degrees inside the dome. Absolutely perfect. Here in the Alamo Dome where the temperature is controlled. It's going to be an interesting ball game tonight, Don. I don't think there's any question about it because Southern a week ago only had 140 yards of total offense going against this UTSA defense. They're going to have to find some early resources in this ball game. Jamar Washington takes the kick from Yanni Rutsis, and he's met right at the 20-yard line. That's Marcus Curry with the big hit. That'll set up a first down and 10. 21-yard return there for this young quarterback, Dark Kesley, the freshman from Shelby, North Carolina. Coincidentally, that's where his coach, Dawson Odoms, is from. 
And like you said, Chuck, he played more than the other backup. Glendon McDaniel last week played well, 5 of 10 passing, and this is his first start. He's going to throw on first down. It's incomplete. Tonight's starting lineups presented by IHOP eat up every moment. You see Washington at one receiver. He's number six. He was the young man who returned the kick. And they're led up front by the right tackle, Skyler Prohl, who's alone. Second down and 10. Yardage tough to come by against this roadrunner defense. And we have whistles and flags, and it's probably procedure. Yeah, and already you're seeing the dominance of this UTSA defensive line on the opening play. Kevin Strong Jr. Foul snap. False start. Number 73 offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Yeah, and Kevin Strong Jr. showed up real well last week against Baylor. I mean, when your one-technique guys are getting that kind of pressure early in a football game, boy, it sure makes everybody on that back end that much better second down and 15 14 50 to play here in the opening quarter as lead turns in the hands to Devin Ben Ben picks up about five but it's now gonna be third and eight and the Jags want to go quickly here with tempo Tala Effa showing blitz, and that caused Lee to get another set of signs from the sideline. Yeah, it's as dirty a box as you're ever going to see right now. Roadrunner showing that they're going to send the house. Mikel Bass comes. Davenport with the pressure, incomplete. Randall Menard, the intended receiver, but Marcus Davenport with all kinds of pressure on the freshman. And this was the refrain last week ago, even in the Big 12 game against Baylor. There are so many quality players for UTSA on this side of the football, and they got them two and three deep. And already we're calling a bunch of different names and a quick series here for Southern to start the ball game. They've had some difficulties in special teams. Austin Summerball with one off the side of his foot. And that's the kind of difficulties they had a week ago. It's going to be great field position inside Jaguar ter territory as the Roadrunners will have it at the 37-yard line. Well, you're not kidding, Don. I mean, that was really their bugaboo last week and one of the reasons why they got behind so quickly against Southern Miss. I mean, when you bring your special teams out and it's so bad at times that they actually had to go out and find another punter this week can tell that Southern is trying to shore that thing up on the fly. Yeah, that was just a 14-yard punt. Brady Jones was licking his chops, wanted a chance to return it, and just didn't get the opportunity. But Dalton Stern and company on offense will. They'll spot the ball at the 45. And that's a tough thing for Southern and what they had a lot of last week. It's like you're not only rolling with a freshman quarterback and an inexperienced running back, then your special teams immediately sticks your defense in a jar. Jalen Rhodes, the tailback, with Halen Stewart, the fullback, offset on first down. Here's Rhodes. Good for about five. Here's our IHOP. Starting lineup for UTSA. Eat up every moment. Dal Dalton Sturm and company will have it at second and five with Rhodes behind him. Stewart and Thomas Jr. his favorite receivers. It's Rhodes again, and Rhodes fights forward for about another two. Jaron Johnson with the tackle. And here's your IHOP starting lineups for UTSA. Stewart and Kerry Thomas Jr. are actually brothers. Shaq Williams, the big tight end. 
And UTSA has already lost Austin McKinney up front to an injury. That offensive line, very, very good and experienced, but also fairly thin. Not a lot of depth on the offensive line. Sturm's going to throw it out of the backfield to Rhodes. Rhodes has the first down and more inside the 30 and nearly to the 25. Andre Augustine with the tackle. And just like that, Chuck, we're seeing a lot of number five. Yeah, not only that, and what a great block outside by Kerry Thomas Jr. Sure, he's a receiver, but look at him seal it up right there, and that allows Rhodes to get to the outside. And well, we talked about the quick start of Dalton Sturm a lot last year, and when he gets going early, he usually has a great game, and it happened more often than not a year ago. And it was the same thing last week, Don. He was had the hot hand early, and it's kind of cool to see them you know, give him some really nice, safe, easy throws early. Try to get him in a rhythm to get him kick-started here. Sturm's second pass of the game over the middle. Got a man wide open. It's Kerry Thomas Jr. It's a touchdown, Roadrunners. Well, so much for the little dink, and that's what they love to do here at UTSA. Pound, 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 and then take their shots downfield. But this was just too easy. Little play fake. Dalton stepping up in the pocket, and that might be the easiest throw he's ever made in his life. And Kerry Thomas Jr. has six points in his bank account. In his bank account. <laughs> Jared Sackett will add the extra point. The freshman kicker will see Victor Falcone as well. But the Roadrunners quickly jump out in front here at home in the Alamo Dome. UTSA 7, Southern nothing. The Jags get it back when we come back. Replays are brought to you by Thomas J. Henry. When your family needs help, call Thomas J. Henry 24-7, nights and weekends, and UTSA will look at that replay all day long. That's as easy as it gets as they jump out to a 7-0 lead. Also, all the first-half scoring summaries are presented by North Star Dodge, your savings destination. Obviously, a great first drive for UTSA, and this is really done, believe it or not, the first FCS team that they've played since 2012. So, you know, they've certainly stacked the schedule pretty stiff as they've kind of started this program, and you know, they've gotten as good as anybody this quickly. is kind of hard to believe, but as we take a look at the scoring summary, just four plays, 45 yards, and a 30-yard touchdown pass to Kerry Thomas Jr. culminated it all. Josiah Tawaefa and that UTSA defense ready to go back out and show what they can do. Again, Chuck, you mentioned it at the outset. Baylor, one of the most prolific offenses in the Big 12 and in the country over the last five seasons. Now, that's not the same Baylor team this year, but still, what UTSA did a week ago, very impressive, and Southern is going to have a hard time getting first downs here today. Yeah, much less points, we believe. Straight drop for Lee, fires over the middle, almost intercepted. C.J. Levine right there. First quarter action brought to you by North Star Dodge. Talking to the coaches this week, Chuck. C.J., one of those kids who from the Beaumont area who had some flooding issues, having to worry about those distractions as well as his duties here playing football. Yeah, and really showed up well last week in spite of it. There's the handoff. About a yard back to the line of scrimmage. Well, talk about these Southern Jaguars, Don. I mean, Coach Odom's team, got to remember, this was an 8-3 and three ball club a year ago. And this program has done a lot of good things over the years. I mean, they've won... 14 plus SWAT championships. I mean, the lists go on and on. If you're going to play an FCS team, this is the one you want to play. It's just a shame that these guys are as banged up as they are to start this early part of the season. 75 players this program has put into the NFL. They've got Hall of Famers. His league is ready to throw. He's pressured. Ball's tip. It's almost picked off by Tawa Effa. He was thinking six, and it just went through his hands. Don, I got to be telling you, as we watch Josiah give himself the punishment of the push-ups, but he yeah, got some big hands up there in front, and we were watching Tal Effa warm up before the game, and he was making one-handed interceptions in the end zone. 
and then throwing the ball back to his coach is just flipping the ball 45 yards. I know that young man's kicking himself right there. He'd love to have that one back. Let's give props to Jared Carter McLean for the batting it down as Jones takes this one at the 50 and on the run. Roadrunners will have it there. Jamar Mitchell making the tackle. Dalton Stern made it look easy the first time. He'll have it back. When we come back to the Alamo Dome, UTSA leads 7-0. We're back inside the Alamo Dome. UTSA leads it 7-0. This first half scoreboard sponsored by John Wayne Home Services. When you need heating, cooling, plumbing, or electrical help, just make one call to fix it all. UTSA's second possession here. Sturm with Greg Campbell coming in motion. Sturm on a boot. And makes the smart thing by just throwing it out of bounds. And Chuck, that's a play that Roadrunner coaches would have liked to have seen a lot more of last year. And this year, they say that Sturm's really matured both in the uh, summer and in the spring. All that experience is paying off for him. Well, I mean, for me, it Andre, I guess Andre Augustine laying the wood right here at the end. It's like, yeah, it was a good play throwing it away, but if that was me, I would have thrown it a couple of instances a little sooner just so I would avoid the contact, but I, I get the impression that Dalton likes contact a little bit. Second down. It's Rhodes inside. Nothing doing as the Jags stop it right there. Now time for our IHOP defensive starters. And you can see, keep your eye on Danny Johnson, the cornerback. Big time athlete there at the corner. In fact, NFL type talent. The play right there made inside CJ Bryant right there on the nose there to stop Jalen Rhodes. Yeah, and one of their best defenders, number 41, Simeon Houston, who's a junior defensive lineman out of Houston. He's missing today's game with an injury, too, and they're really going to miss his presence up front. We've got a timeout. UTSA is going to take it. Frank Wilson and his staff didn't like the uh, timeout. UTSA. The look of that play here on third down and 11. So they'll talk it over. Talk to Frank Self about this week, Chuck. What a great job he did with that UTSA offense going into Media Waco, timeout. managing that game. They just dominated the time of possession. When we come back, UTSA will try to convert on third and 11. It's 7-0 from the Dome. Welcome back. UTSA is one for one on third down conversions today. It's third and 11 right here. And this is a defense that likes to put pressure, so watch out here on third and long. Sturm straight back. Has Shaq Williams, now fires over the middle. He's got a man wide open. Across the 30, right to the 31, is Greg Campbell, Jr. But we've got a flag down in the backfield. Just like Thomas, Jr. earlier, Holding Campbell found his way. Offense. Team York penalty, still third down. Across the middle, but there was a hold, so it'll come back. Yeah, the defensive coordinator for Southern, Trey Oliver, is a big pressure kind of guy and he really likes his corners and safeties on this team. He kind of decided that he was just gonna let his guys rush up front and give Dalton Sturm some time to make a play, and that's exactly what he did. I don't know if they want to make that mistake again. So it'll be third and 21 from their own 39. They're gonna have to try to get some more guys home because you give Dalton that kind of time and he's gonna find the open fella. Third and 21, here we go. Sturm, straight drop underneath to Rhodes, who's now got it. Jalen Rhodes, can he get to the stick? He does. First down, Roadrunners. Danny Johnson there to trip him up, but not before Jalen Rhodes, who did a great job concentrating to bring that in, picks up a first down. Well, it's really hard to believe that, given the fact that they were facing a zone here, they were still able to get this, but that just tells you about the speed and the shiftiness once he finds the ears that Jalen Rhodes possesses. I mean, he was able to pick him up and put him down and get his squad a fresh set of downs. First and 10 for the Roadrunners, and it's Rhodes again. Gets a good seal block.
from Shaq Williams that breaks him all the way down to the 30. And he took the words right out of my mouth. I mean, Shaq was up there doing what he needed to do and really helped give Rhodes all kinds of area in which to navigate. That's your guy. Right, Vince Lombardi? We get a seal here and a <laughs> seal here, and we run it in the alley. That's right. Run to daylight. <laughs> There's lots of daylight on that play, as there have been on just about all these UTSA plays so far to start this game. Second and three. Sturm wants to throw it. Does. Caught. Thomas. Inside the 15, down to the 14, before Andre Augustine makes the tackle. And we talked a lot about... Kerry Thomas Jr. over the years here playing ball at UTSA and it's just it's so amazing to see this guy's development you know we know he can catch the ball we know he can run he's got all kinds of athleticism but just the headiness to you know find the soft spot in the zone there just kind of settle down and that's just too easy a catch the guys up front doing a really nice job giving Dalton Sturm time to throw the football here's Rhodes in the alley again inside the 10 And I don't know that, Don, that the offensive line for UTSA got enough credit for what they were able to do last week. I think if you were going to ask anybody about this team coming into the season, that Austin Pratt and company, of course, we know what kind of player Austin Pratt is, but there's so many questions that were they going to be able to hold their own, and this team's going to go about as far as they're going to take them, and that looks like a pretty good drive right there. Jalen Rhodes walks in right down... Main Street for another touchdown for the Roadrunners. Showing up again, second week in a row. That's an eight yard touchdown and a great job by that UTSA offensive line to open up the hole. Yeah, it's all you can eat early and a nice cutback, but again, the guys up front are getting an unbelievable push and manhandling at this point. Jared Sackett on for the PAT. It is up, it is good, and the Roadrunners extend their lead to 14 to nothing. UTSA fans had to wait an extra couple of weeks to see their team, but they like what they see so far. Their Roadrunners out in front, 14 to nothing, 7.37 to play here at the Alamo Dome. Welcome back to the Alamo Dome, UTSA and Southern here on the Citywide Sports Network. Our Thomas J. Henry replay, looking at Jalen Rhodes going right up the middle, Chuck. We talk so much about this team's defense and so much about their passing game with Sturm and these wide receivers. The offensive line, kind of the unsung heroes, but they're getting work done today. No, they did, obviously, today so far. And then, again, against Baylor, we talked about the athleticism of Baylor's front four on defense, and they absolutely held their own last week. There's no question about it. Jamar Washington off the Daniel Portillo kick, and he is drilled! Ooh. Lakel Bass, or make that Jacoby Jones. Hey, remember this week Coach Wilson was telling us that he wants... It was Bass. He wants I-10 Rex and not UTSA Boulevard Rex. He just got him an i 10 right there. Bass is one of those guys, plays with Tawa Effa as linebacker, and of course all the publicity goes to Josiah. But Lakel's making a name for himself. Coach has told us this week... This guy's doing a fantastic job at linebacker. And man, he's playing on special teams, showing up. Yeah, and you see our North Star scoring summary there. And don't forget the third and 21 that helps spring that touchdown. First down and 10, Lee wants to throw. He does, it's caught, it's complete. And near a first down for Randall Menard. Yeah, I like the play call there. Get the young guy, get his feet out from under him here and get him on the outside. Let him feel like he's in a football game and not just keep him in the pocket early. Let him see if he can get a rhythm and see if they can go hurry up here. But get him moving around a little bit. It's tough when you're a young guy trying to read the defense. And sometimes if you shorten that field and make it half a field, it's easier for a young guy to kind of acclimate himself. Devin Ben has nowhere to go as Tawa Effa and the interior part of that UTSA defense closed it quickly. But it was good enough for a first down. They only needed about a half yard. So that'll move the chains for the Jaguars. Lee starting to settle down now, it looks like, a little bit. 
Here's Jamarcus Mims. He's not going anywhere. No gain, maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Nate Gaines and C.J. Levine there. Yeah, as we said, I mean, only 140 yards of offense last week ago for this team, and it's tough. You got some injuries. You got some young guys getting their first varsity snaps, if you will. Got a young quarterback here, and they really, what they thought about Dark West Lee a week ago was that he showed the most poise under fire last week, and that's why they went with him. But don't be surprised if we see a lot of different cats tonight. Second down and 10 for Lee. Got pressure coming. Hit as he throws. Marcus Davenport there to disrupt things, and it's incomplete. And that's why number 93 has a real good chance of playing on Sundays. Yeah, he's got all the measurables. You can start with 6'7", and, you know, he was a basketball player in high school, too. He could probably still give it a shot for the runners, and I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he does at some point. But, yeah, I don't think there's any question that this guy's going to have a really good chance to play on Sundays in the very near future. Third down and 10. Southern 0 for 2 on third down conversions today. UTSA again showing that they're going to send the house. Tawa Effa and Bass right over center. Looks like they're going to come. Tawa Effa calling for a flag for delay a game. And delay it's, game. Off he got it. 18. Correction, timeout, Southern. All right, they give Southern the timeout over the penalty. They said they called it just in time. As you look at Coach Dawson Odoms and Chuck, again, so far, we're not seeing the best of these Southern Jaguars, but in his sixth year, like you say, he's done a, a heck of a job with that program. I mean, yeah, I mean, just look at his winning percentage. I mean, he's 38 up and 18 down. We talk about all these different things that they've been able to do here. It's it's just a little rough right now as we go down to Mike down on the sidelines. What's up, Mike Lefko? All right, having a little trouble with Mike's mic. Really, I thought it was just me and my own. It's hard to hear. To <laughs> <laughs> take a look at Josiah Tawa Effa, all everything as a freshman. All conference. Yeah, you know, what was interesting about his play last week, he didn't have all that many tackles. He did have half a sack, but Coach Wilson said, no, he's just a part of the puzzle. So he played exactly what we wanted him to do, and I thought it was great. That last series where they needed a three and out and got a four and out, he was just there to spy the quarterback, and he absolutely had a lot to do with making that happen for the UTSA defense, including the one that got him off the field. He drops back and he again thinks that the penalty will be a false start, and it is on the Southern Jaguars. False start, 73 offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. You know what's interesting? This is almost like body blows in a boxing match, Don. I mean, you've got these offensive linemen up front that, to this point, it's kind of been an avalanche not going in their favor, and they're trying to get every advantage they can to try to keep these big beasties on the defensive line out of their backfield. So you can understand why they're quick starting here and there. Third down and 15. A little jumpy after going against the UTSA a couple of series. Blitz coming. Again, they got the lead. Look out, it's picked. C.J. Levine with the Oski still on his feet. Flag flies late as a helmet came off. That's going to be a penalty on Southern for the loss of a helmet. C.J. Levine, man, that's the second week in a row. I mean, he showed up huge a week ago against Baylor. He was one of the many guys on that back end because UTSA likes to keep their cover corners out on an island so they can get more guys pressuring in the backfield. And C.J. was one of those guys that really showed up well last week. And... That's a huge play early, obviously, for UTSA, who also had an interception last year, which stopped a long streak. They didn't get a lot of those last year. The Southern defense already on the field. We assume the penalty is on Southern for that helmet coming off, but if a UTSA player ripped it off, I guess conceivably the penalty could be against UTSA. Either way, it happened after the Levine interception. 
and so it would go against UTSA if that's the penalty on the return. They're talking it over, and they'll sort it all out. They'll get the time and the distance and the spot. Here we go. Referee Joe Larry saying we have two fouls on the play. play. After interception, personal foul, continuing to play without a helmet, offense number 73. Thigh-line interference, defense number 25. Those penalties will offset. First down. I kind of so, thought that was admirable, guy playing without his helmet. I guess that's, that's not allowed, huh? Much ado about nothing. Once your hat comes off, you have to stop in your tracks. And As you, you can see, Don, I mean, just no throwing lane for Lee to try to step up and throw. There's just pressure in his face. There's pressure on the side. And that redshirt freshman is getting thrown into the fire today against this massive and athletic defensive line for UTSA. Terrell Clay in it running back for Rhodes. The Sturm boots left and fires to Greg Campbell. Coming up to make the tackle, number 29, Jamar Mitchell. And this is one of those positions on the field for UTSA where they are exceptionally deep. They got as many as eight guys that they feel very comfortable with running in and out of this lineup, Campbell being one of them. And that's an easy pitch and catch right there as UTSA has second and short now. Here's Clay. He's stopped. Right there in his tracks by big number 72, Jamal Tillman. Yeah, Jamal, Jamal Tillman, just a sophomore from Harvey, Louisiana, 6'2", 240 pounds. And let's watch him eat. Oh, just beat his man up front. And Manu Imanu getting to the point of attack and making a really nice play for Southern. And boy, did they need it. They take that second and short now and make it third and a little more difficult. Dannon Cavill from Madison, who went to Oklahoma before he transferred to UTSA, is split far right. It's Campbell on the left side. They throw it instead to Clay out of the backfield, makes one man miss, gets the 20 inside the 15, all the way down to the 10 yard line before Danny Johnson brings him down. Well, what can you say about Terrell Clay? I mean, you make the man miss and then. That's a huge play individually. I mean, didn't look like that thing was going to go for anything. And it's been that kind of start for the UTSA offense. Doesn't matter the down, doesn't matter the distance. They need fresh chains. They're getting them. There's Clay again right up the middle. Got room near the five. Tough yards there. That'll set up second down and goal. Montavious Gaines making the tackle. Interested to see we didn't have those starting wide outs in. Campbell was in there along with Cavill, but he comes out, and now we've got the brothers in there, Stewart and Thomas, along with the fullback, Devin Rothrock, in the block for Clay. Here's Clay cutting it up to the one. Did he get in? No, it's close. He's going to be spotted right at about the one-and-a-half, two-yard line. Andre Augustine with the tackle. Just a great read that time. The ball looked like he was going to try to kick it outside on the sweep and then decided to got some pressure there from his right side, then kicked it back in towards the line of scrimmage. Almost was able to sneak that thing into the end zone. Third and goal from the two. UTSA is perfect on third down. How about a fade to Stewart over here to the left? Instead, they hand to Clay, and he walks in for a touchdown. Did they give it to him? Yeah. I don't see a call. They did. Touchdown, Tyrell Clay. Well, you come into a baseball game and you go three for three. That's a pretty good start. And UTSA has had all kinds of great field position to work with early in this football game because of Southern's offense and their inability to move the chains, and they are absolutely taking advantage at this point. Jared Sackett with the extra point. The freshman's kick is good again. And the Roadrunners lead it 21 to nothing. 2.52 here to play in the first quarter, and it is all Roadrunners. Just a dominating performance 
by the two lines of scrimmage. The defense with all kinds of pressure on young quarterback Lee and the offensive line dominating for the UTSA road, Roadrunner running game. Well, I mean, just like you draw it up, right? I mean, I don't know that you want it to be this easy this soon, but hey, you got to line up and play who's in front of you, and absolutely UTSA is doing that right now. But as we talked about, you know, one of the things the coaches were talking about this week on the southern side is that Lee holds the ball a little too much or holds it a little too long. But I'm telling you, man, when you got that kind of pressure, it's not easy. And then, of course, when you're working on a short field, the offense doesn't have to go very far. And we talked about how key they've been on third downs, and it's led to another touchdown. Daniel Portillo will kick it off. Jamar Washington at the one. Come to his right. And he's stuck again right at about the 15-yard line. Let's go down to Mike Lefko on the sidelines. Mike, we couldn't hear you a little bit earlier. What's going on, buddy? Yeah, let's try take two here. Well, you've seen the dominance so far, and Pete Golding talked about this earlier in the week. They wanted to try to check with me for a sudden. They want to look back to the coordinator frequently, and you've seen UTSA be overly aggressive because they want to get the ball out of Lee's hands quickly, and so far it's paid off for the Roadrunners. All right, thanks a lot, Mike. Chuck, uh, we talked about Marcus Davenport, the senior from Stevens High School playing on Sunday, Sunday. He just set a school record with 18 hurries. Just dominating from that left end position. He's right there on the tackle again here. Take a look at our North Star Dodge scoring summary. Drive for the Roadrunners again. Took only six plays. 2.58 off the clock going. 27 yards and finishing up with Terrell Clay's two-yard touchdown. Run. Yeah, that was the big key a week ago, too. Long plays, but one of the keys this week was to finish off drives, and I think you'd have to say that they've done that. Yeah, a bit of a pre-snap movement again. Ball start, nine offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. Well, for Coach Odoms' crew, this is exactly what they did not want to have happen. We talked about Southern Miss in that game a week ago. I mean, they felt like there were a couple of bad things that went happen early in that game, and stuff just started to snowball on them, and they really felt like if they could just kind of tighten up a couple of things and have a couple of positive plays or some things happen early for them, they could get out from underneath that, but this has been the story repeating itself two weeks in a row. UTSA playing a lot of kids on defense now as Lee is eaten up. Marcus Curry there to make the tackle. And I'm not going to lie, Don, that was actually the lesser of all the evils. The young freshman doing exactly what he saw in front of him, and there was absolutely nothing available downfield. They had one guy covered downfield deep, and then double coverage on the slot guy. I mean, there was just nowhere to go with the football. Another third down conversion. Southern is 0 for 3. Inside handoff. Mikel Bass is there to bring him down after about a two yard gain. But the Roadrunners again get it back with great field position with a minute to go. And already we are seeing mass substitutions on that UTSA defense. A lot of twos going on that rep. Now, well, Mikel Bass is. A young man whose name we called quite a bit last year. He showed up again last week, as did others. I mean, what I think surprises me most about what this program has done so efficiently and so successfully this soon is the fact that they've not only got players, they're stacking them at a lot of spots. Almost getting there. Jones will take it. He's buried right there at the 45-yard line. Elijah Small. Cavill almost blocked it for the Roadrunners. It was interesting looking at the roster this year, Chuck, a lot of these guys that are really con contributing for UTSA that are local kids from San Antonio, they recruit their own backyard. Brandeis High School not far at all from that campus. 
They got three guys that contribute from Brandeis, another three from Stevens. All Northside schools in that same area of campus. And Cavill, one of those guys from Madison, your alma mater. It's UTSA with 132 total yards, and the defense doing it again today with only 18. And again, we're talking about another series that begins in enemy territory. I mean, this is this is what you want. The average is the 40. Shaq Wilson coming in motion. And he was still in motion. I think that's what the UTSA is going to be called for. Didn't quite get set. Well, they're not perfect. False start, <laughs> number seven offense. Five yard penalty, first down. And I'm telling you, that was what the most impressive thing was last week. I'm sure they would have liked to have had more points. And they had a field goal blocked in that game, but quite frankly, Don, I mean, we talked about it. Baylor was lucky to get 10 points a week ago. I mean, they got their only touchdown set up after they muffed the punt. So it was just really a dominating performance, both offensively and defensively. Here's the handoff to Rhodes right up the middle. Picks up about five before he's clothesline there right at about the 44 yard line blaze moorhead in it wide receiver as utsa runs receivers in and out brady jones now comes in for him it'll be stewart check to the right side thomas jr to the left and shaq williams at the tight end and Rhodes behind stern stern looking to his right now he's going to run it up the middle stern with a nice move stern still running to the 25 yard line down to the 24 a shake and bake at about the 35 will end the quarter after a 20 yard run by dalton stern i remember last week he had a 40 yarder that set up the game winner well the first quarter is history here in the alamo dome utsa all over southern 21 to nothing and they can add to it when we come back Welcome back to the Alamo Dome. The Roadrunners on the move again. Dalton Sturm and company. As we said off the top of the broadcast, he can beat you with his arm. He can beat you with his feet. We saw a nifty run to set up a new set of downs for Dalton Sturm. Halen Stewart in at fullback now. Delayed handoff to Rhodes. Rhodes finds his way down to near the 15 before... Danny Johnson there to make the tackle. The second quarter of tonight's CSN football presented by the San Antonio Express News, bringing you the real facts since 1865. And you look at Jalen Rhodes, and man, he is snapping ankles early in this football game. I mean, his shiftiness really shows up, and it did a lot last year when he was the complimentary back to Jarvion Williams, but he's certainly taking and running this thing He's the lead running back on this football team and really showing up large, and there's a no touchdown. Wide open, Shaq Williams, touchdown Roadrunners. Great route call by Frank Selfo, 17 yards. And it was one of those routes on the sideline that had everybody confused because they had a man underneath, and then Shaq the tight end released. Shaq is one of those guys that is really emerging. I mean, he's already got the physical traits, in terms of his size and his height, he's got great hands. He's also one of those guys, too, that can beat you over the top. But, and again, I don't know how much more easy it's ever going to be for Shaq to get into the end zone. I'm sure he'll take it. Result of the play is a touchdown. After the play, a sportsmanlike conduct, 68, offense. That penalty will be enforced on the succeeding kickoff. Well, that's not going to make Frank Wilson very happy, but... He'll take the touchdown. It's our man Austin Pratt. <laughs> That's what Austin Pratt does. Austin Pratt is a scrapper. Austin Pratt. Remember that Old Dominion game we did last year? <laughs> he, he was one of the guys that single-handedly turned that game because of his physical play in the pits. You know, we talked to Frank Selfo this week. Uh, he was telling us about the offense. And I always ask this question, hey, coach, we know we're going to see this and this and this. Tell us what we might see that we're not expecting. And he said, we got to get the ball to Shaq Williams. And we're going to. And he's got his first touchdown of the year. 
As you look at our North Star Dodge scoring summary, it only took four plays, 44 yards, as Coach, Coach Wilson gets the explanation as the penalty on Pratt. And you see Pratt right there just kind of maybe stayed with his block a little bit too long after the play. I couldn't really see it from here. Yeah, it's one of those two where Dalton Stern, I'm sure, is going to be very complimentary to the big guys up front because that's a throwing lane second to none. And I'm sure coaches get an explanation as to what exactly Austin Pratt did. But Austin Pratt's just one of those JYDs, Don. I know we love him. I mean, you got to have junkyard dogs on your team. And again, that Old Dominion game last year, he wasn't a starter. And they were getting smashed up front by Old Dominion. And as soon as he came into the game, put another couple guys in there. They had a fullback they put in there too that day. And it absolutely stemmed the tide. They went on a long drive where all they did was play smash mouth football. It was a long, sustained drive. And I don't think Austin Pratt has yeah, Andrew King. taken a bench since. Andrew King came in at fullback and really he and Pratt together changed everything. That's what happens. You get your opportunity. You get a chance to show what you can do. And Austin Pratt is, you know, those other guys feed off that too. Make no mistake about it. Washington coming to this side, and boy, he's buried right there. Never had a chance. As UTSA special teams led by Anthony Hickey just had it snuffed out from the get-go. Hickey took a beeline right for the returner. Anthony Hickey, one of those guys from San Juan Capistrano, California, getting his name in the record books today. Going to see a lot of guys for UTSA, I think, get some snaps in this ball game this afternoon. And one thing to watch again, just keep watching number 93. Lined up on the right end here for UTSA, closest to your screen. Yeah, they're going to have to double him. Marcus Davenport is just a low. Deep ball, wide open. Just overshot his intended receiver, Dontrell Brown, but finally got some separation there. <laughs> Yeah, and that time the offensive line for Southern did a really nice job. Got a nice cut there on Davenport. And had some time to throw it, and that's just one of those plays you have to try to make to try to loosen up this UTSA defense because to this point, they haven't even picked up a first down. Clayton Johnson, the corner there. Nate Gaines still in at safety. The starting linebackers are in. Looks like most of the ones in for UTSA. Firing over the middle and incomplete. That one just was too hot for Jamar Washington. A lot of velocity and Washington really never had a shot. Yeah, that was what we call roasting the nut right there. <laughs> and there was there was some pepper on that thing. But I like I like Darquez and his mindset early in this football game. I mean you know, a lot of young quarterbacks would be automatically looking for their check down, and not this young man. I mean, he was looking to move the ball downfield and try to move the sticks, and it hasn't gone his way to this point. But, you know, this experience that he's getting against this defense, I promise you is going to make him ready for SWAT conference play. 0 for 4 on third down conversions and 0 for 5. Unless there's a flag, there's not. And UTSA will take over. Devron Davis, also an NFL prospect. At corner for the Roadrunners, number one had blanketed coverage there. And Matt Gidry will trot on to return this punt. Yeah, you talked about Devron Davis. He's another young man that came to UTSA via the California JUCO system. And you're right. I mean, a lot of guys saying right now he's a mid-round pick. And I think Devron will, will tell you he's going to work on trying to improve that. But between he and Austin Jupy on the other end, that's a pretty formidable combo out there. Not to mention some of these other guys they've got. Southern finally has a good punt. Backs Gidry all the way up to the 30-yard line. UTLC will have it at the 32. And we've seen a lot of backups for UTSA on the defensive side of the football. I wonder if we'll start seeing some on the offensive side. UTSA has the ball and a 28-0 lead when we come back. Welcome back to the Alamo Dome, where UTSA will be starting in their own territory for the first time tonight. And let's go down to the sidelines and Mike Lefko. Mike? All right, Mike. 
We'll work on the mic, Mike. First and 10. Throw it out to the outside. Caught. And that's Kerry Thomas Jr. You know, Don, this is one of those interesting football games where obviously we've seen what we've seen here through the first quarter plus, and it's 28 nothing UTSA. But, man, all you have to do is go back to that Texas A&M-UCLA game a couple of weeks ago where I couldn't believe what I was watching in the second half, where you had one team that was absolutely burying the other team, and then you had a reversal of that. I mean, the last thing you want to do is give Southern any kind of life at this point. you got to go for the jugular. Play action. Sturm wants it all. He's got Stewart down there and just overthrew him. Josh Stewart ran a great route and really Sturm threw a good ball. It was just a little about maybe three yards too deep. Yeah, you know, we like Kerry Thomas Jr. and everything that these guys are about. And, well, Josh doesn't give anything away either. I mean, he's got an NFL body and just a tick overthrown on that one is the runners kind of opening up the playbook a little bit. That's what they like to do. Pound, 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 and then take their shots. And they gave you one example of that right there. Third down and six. Cavill goes in motion. And it's Sturm looking all the way over the middle. Caught. It's good for a first down. It's Shaq Williams is tied in who scored the touchdown on the last drive for Montavious Gaines makes the tackle. It was just like the development of what's going on with Shaq. And again, it's one of those guys, the more comfortable he feels getting down the field and making plays. I mean, can you imagine what the wide receiver talent that UTSA already possesses there? And then to add a guy like Shaq at the tight end is another weapon. I think Conference USA has been put on notice. Halen Stewart in on first down. Campbell Jr. in as well. This is a give all the way to Tyrell Clay. He's already got a touchdown today. He picks up about three. And you start to wonder about the Southern Jags defense. I mean, they have been on the field an awful lot here in the first half and obviously making a really nice stop right there, but these, are, these snaps are starting to add up. Second down and eight. Toss to Clay coming right. He's met by the linebacker after a gain of about three. Nice pursuit by Dekavian Champion. Coach Wilson was hyping the Southern linebackers as a unit this week, talking about how they fly to the ball, and he really had a lot of respect for that particular position on the field. Those guys have looked pretty darn solid on these first two plays. Third down, like a set of downs. Third down conversion time. UTSA is perfect. Five for five on the day. Third and six. Stern throwing. Got Thomas Jr. He's got the sticks for a first down. And they're six for six on conversions. Just like the overall design of this Frank Selfo play right there. You got three guys over here on the left side. Two of them going vertical. And then you have the other guy just doing out and up, and it's really a lot for three DBs to contend with over there. And the final result is an easy pitch by Dalton and another first down for UTSA. Stewart checks in. Campbell Jr. comes out. So he's got Stewart wide left. His brother, Kerry Thomas Jr., wide right with Jones in the slot. Stewart, the fullback, with Clay in at tailback. It's a play fake to Clay. Wants to go deep over the middle. Got a man. It's Brady Jones. Brady Jones to the 10. And a shoe st string tackle is the only thing that kept him from scoring is Jenny, Danny Johnson grabbed him around the knees, but not before he picks up 30 yards. Again, you just have that much time to throw the football from the big guys up front. And then your two wideouts just doing a simple crossing route. And Dalton's waiting for one of them to flash. It's Brady Jones. And here we go again. First and goal from the 10. Cavill split right. Clay's got it. Clay makes a couple of guys myth, picks up about four. You talk about all these running backs that UTSA has, and Coach Selfo was telling us about how many of these guys had such great camps. 
and there's a fight to get on the playing field. So when you see you know, some of these guys are taking hits right at the line of scrimmage and they're still busting it to try to get additional yardage, it's because they're trying to give those coaches something to look at. They want to be the guy that's backing up five back there. Twins right, twins left. And now Clay comes to the right. Second and goal. Yep, so Called right. quarterback draw, Dalton Sturm, touchdown Roadrunners. I didn't have the guts to call it. It's like they're spreading it out so he can just run it. It's just so many different things to contend if you're Southern and you put that much stress with that many guys on the field. I don't know why pro teams don't do this more often. I mean, look at that. Don, you score on that play. Uh, just, maybe not. Just too easy. Spread them wide open. Dalton Sturm now 11 for 13, passing for 170 yards and two touchdowns, and two carries for 28 yards and a score. It's the Dalton Sturm Show, joined by his friends on defense, UTSA dominating Southern. It's 35-0 with 9-19 left in the first half. Welcome back to the Alamo Dome where UTSA leads Southern 35 to nothing. Here's our North Star Dodge scoring summary. That one nine plays capped off by Dalton's eight yard score. Went 68 yards, took four minutes off the clock. And again, UTSA doing it all. Throwing underneath, throwing deep, running the football well. Complete domination on both sides of the ball. Roger that. Washington's going to take a knee here. That'll be a touchback. Southern would like to show a little bit of signs of life offensively before halftime. Yeah, I mean, first things first. You know, you got to figure out a way to at least get one first down and then see if you can build from there. And again, we talk about these guys and what they're facing. I mean, this is a UTSA offense that held Baylor to its lowest point total in like five years. All right, we're seeing a lot of the UTSA backups in on defense, and we also see Glendon McDaniel as the new quarterback for Southern. He was initially the backup to Austin Howard, but didn't play quite as well as Lee did as he completes it to Jamarquez Mims. He started last week as we have an injury on the field for one of the Jags. Mm. Jamarquez Mims uh, carried the football. Well, we already talked about how the Jags were already hurting in a lot of other ways and spots all over the field. And we were talking about Howard, their starting quarterback. He was a three-year starter. He took a shot right there in the head and the neck area. I'll we'll hope for the best there. But getting back to their quarterback situation, they hadn't had a change at quarterback in three years. And so you lose a guy that's, you know, that makes your offense go. And it all kind of snowballs from there. All right, we'll take a break with the officials here as they attend to Mims. We'll be back with UTSA leading 35 to nothing. We're back inside the Alamo Dome where Dr. David Schmidt and the team from the UTSA medical staff joining with the Southern medical staff and evaluating young Jamarquez Mims and it's good to see him get up. It looked like some sort of neck stinger and they were just kind of taking him through a battery of tests to see if he had feeling in his arms and legs and You can watch on the replay, his neck gets compressed. And when that happens, all bets are off as to see what's going to happen with that spine. And right there, just the top of his neck, top of his helmet was hit, compressed his neck. And you can see, first thing he reaches for is his right knee. But watch the crown of his helmet right there. And he also reached for his right knee. So. Yeah, we'll hope for the best there, obviously. This is this is tough to see sometimes when you see a young man giving maximum effort and 
you know, on both sides of the ball. And obviously, Coach Odom's very concerned about the well being of his student athlete, as we all are. Absolutely. The Southern Jaguars huddling up over there. Mims really gingerly walking off the field. Had some tough, tough injuries. We told you earlier at the top of the broadcast, Austin Howard, their quarterback, was knocked out against Southern Miss. And that's why we're seeing McDaniel and Lee. They also lost their leading rusher. Herbert Edwards should return next week. He's got a hamstring. And with conference play starting, they just felt like he could probably go today, but why risk it? And so they're down to their backup running backs with Devin Ben and Jamarquez Mims. And now with Mims out, we'll have to see some younger guys as well. UTSA with almost the entire second team defense in. Sands Nate Gaines, who is still on the field, leading things from the safety position. Yeah, Scoob's got a pick last week. There's a slant that's defended well, but a flag comes in. As UTSA's John Tavius Mosley from Tyler was there on the coverage. Chuck Baker, the intended receiver, and Mosley's one of those guys the coaches told us they were looking forward to seeing get some time this week. Here's the call. Pass interference, defense number 28. Spot foul, automatic first down. Yeah, just a freshman. And they're they're really stacking DBs at this school. I'm telling you. I tried to get Frank to tell me about matching up some of these guys with some of those hosses he had at LSU, and he just he just said to me during the conference call, Don, you were there. He's like, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> with all the first-round studs that he had out there. But these guys can play, and we're seeing it on display here today. Inside handoff. And King Newton there to bring him down. To talk about all the stud DBs that Frank had at LSU when he was the recruiting coordinator there. Honey Badger, and Mo Claiborne, Patrick Peterson. That's a pretty elite level group. Yeah, that was a pretty silly like, question like for all me to guys, go there. All guys taken in the top <laughs> dozen picks in yeah. the first round. Yeah, lesson learned. He could have blown me up. He was pretty nice about it. Second and eight. <laughs> yeah. Pass out into the flat. Jamar Washington on the catch, but it didn't go for long because UTSA's defense was there to bring him down. Nate Gaines in on the tackle. And nice play as well by Carl Austin the third. You know, going to McDaniel had a really tough road last week against Southern Miss of Conference USA, but you know, I bet what he saw last week will make him a little better today. He looks like he's at least poised in there after seeing some bullets last week. 0 for 5 on third down, make it 0 for 6 as it's incomplete. Dontrell Brown, the intended receiver. And again, the Roadrunners with great defensive coverage. Brendan Johnson over there. Marcus Curry in as well. Matt Gidry will be back to receive the punt. Yeah, and one of those interceptions last week was a pick six. So, again, it just kind of snowballed for Southern in the first quarter last week. They were down 28 zip after one, and it was pretty much over at that point. And it's been hard for them to quell the storm today as well. Punt is off the side of the foot and out of bounds. And UTSA will have it there. Wait to see if Dalton Stern puts his hat on or if it's going to be the young freshman right here in San Antonio. We'll find out when we come back. Roadrunners up 35-0, looking to add to it before halftime. 7.30 left to play here from the Dome. Dalton Sturm has his helmet on. He'll come back out with the UTSA first team offense. And they're up 35 to nothing. But you know, Chuck, when the UTSAs and the North Texas States and the teams like that go into Oklahoma or Arkansas and non, you know, pre-conference play, a lot of times those big dogs, UT and others, bury teams, you know, 66 to six. UTSA has got to do the same thing here when you have Southern. This is exactly part of the growth process. You're just coming off the biggest win in school history, but you don't want to follow it up and lay an egg the next week. You got to come out and make it stick. Jalen Rhodes. Almost popped it. A nice first down for Jalen Rhodes. 19 yards. 
And for all the firsts, Don, in this program, as we watch Jalen do his thing, this is going to be another first. How are you guys going to deal with success? Because there's going to be a lot of it this year, I believe. And this is part of it. You've got to handle your business every snap of every down. And they're certainly doing that today. Here's Brady Jones out of the backfield. Brady already has one big gain today, and he's got another now. It's good for a first down as we head down to the si sidelines. And Mike Lefko. Well, Don, it's been so effective, Dalton Stern, moving the offense. It's easy to forget that Kyle McKinney was lost for the season on the first series against Baylor. Now every coach will say next man up, but it's really been that way with the experience. Juan Perez stepped in, and they really haven't missed a beat with the experience laid in the offensive line. Not a beat at all as Sturm wants to run. He's lassoed down right there at the 45. And it was at Pratt in with some extracurriculars again. Aaron Tiller on the tackle. You now we talked about what this offensive line has done in this game and even, you know, stepping up for the injured fellow. I mean, we talk about that on the other side too, the defensive line. I mean, as good as UTSA's defensive line is, I mean, we're not even talking about the fact that they lost Solomon Wise, one of their better guys, too, during training camp. A little bubble screen for Greg Campbell, Jr. Campbell inside the 25 down to the 19-yard line. They're showing you a little bit of everything right now. And I'm sure Dalton would tell you on the last play, he probably should have found his check down guy. He just figured he could make every play downfield. But this is part of the maturation and the growth, too, of the young quarterback. I mean, it's sometimes you just take what they're giving you. 20-yard gain there for Sturm to Campbell. Sturm's numbers are going to look unbelievable in this one. And they were unbelievable a week ago. Rhodes bounces off the first couple of tacklers and continues forward for a gain of about three. Clock moves inside of five and a half minutes to play. Yep, that's pretty unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, considering last week we said his quarterback rating was up over 130, only five incompletes in the game a week ago. Pretty good start to the season, I'd say. 13 for 15. Wow. Second down and nine here with Rhodes behind him. It's a play fake and a boot. Sturm throwing, coming back for it is Cavill, but it's incomplete. Almost made the catch. I'll tell you what, I can't believe he was able to put that ball exactly where he wanted it on that. I mean, that's the only place you can go with it. We talked about the boot, but he's got a defender barreling down on him with his hand in his face. Look at the accuracy of this. Just a great play by Mitchell there. For no seven. question. No question. Blanket of the receiver. All right, so UTSA is perfect. Six for six on third down. This season, 44%, 100% today. Let's see if they convert. Sturm waiting. Got Shaq. Shaq Williams caught. Touchdown, UTSA. What do you talk about? Offense is playing chess against a defense trying to play checkers over on the other side. There's, uh, on the other side, there's so much window dressing going on with UTSA. I mean, I get caught looking up at the guy at the top of the screen who's running a dig, and Dalton's going for the home run, and what a great catch on the back end by Shaq. Laying out, getting both hands under that football for the punch. Second one of the day. Shaq Williams with tight end size, but wide receiver skills, and he showed him off there, making a difficult grab to put UTSA up 42 to nothing, and we still have four and a half minutes to play here in the first half. That drive going seven plays, 66 yards, and taking two minutes and 42 seconds off the clock, and Dalton Sturm again with another strike. Actually, wasn't a great throw. It was a better catch, but it wasn't close enough for Shaq to make a play on the ball. Yeah, I mean, all you got to do is get it close, but again, I mean, if you're a quarterback, that's what you want to try to do. I mean... You want to leave no stone unturned when you're trying to get your man the football, keep it as far away from the defenders as possible. And Dalton Sturm did just that as we take a look at our North Star Dodge scoring summary. Up and down the field they go again. This time it's seven plays for 66 yards and only 242 
off the allotted play clock. And he's also really spread it around today. Seven different receivers for Stern. Washington will kneel it down there, and Southern will have it at the 25-yard line. And four, 48 left to try and do something offensively here before halftime. That's what their offensive coordinator is doing right now, going over it with them. It's, let's see if we can get something positive to end this first half. And absolutely nothing has gone our way to this point. It's been a struggle offensively. Special teams have been a disaster. And we know what UTSA's offense is doing because they've been marching up and down the field, getting touchdowns and finishing drives. So let's see if Southern can get something going here, something to hang their hat on before the half. Tawa Effa in there showing blitz. Mikel Bass. Making the tackle, but not before. It's a big game for Southern. John Tavius Mosley on the tackle as Ben carried it for about eight or nine yards. So there we are. This is a really young Southern squad in some spots, especially with the uh, with the injuries that we talked about earlier. But Ben, just a freshman from New Orleans. Nice run there. Second down and two. McDaniel's got it. McDaniel's got lots of room to run. Finally tackled by Tawa Effa after the 45. And coming up at halftime, Mike Lefko is going to bring us the Teamwork fi Financial Halftime Show. Teamwork Financial is the team for your secure financial future. He'll be talking to UTSA President Dr. Taylor and me, UTSA quarterback Dalton Stern, and we'll have first half highlights and stats. They're already Southern's best drive of the first half. Straight drop. And McDaniel has dropped a host of roadrunners there, including Tawa Effa, who get credit for the tackle. Yeah, he had first crack, and then he got some help. He just didn't want to do too much damage here on the back end, but he came free, and young quarterback doesn't see it. And yeah, he's going to get at least half a sack on that one. But lots of road runners in there collapsing the pocket and is promising this drive once looked. It's now second and long. UTSA now rotating first and second teamers in on defense. A little swing pass. Dontel Brown. Make it Devin Ben. Yeah, and then you can see a young player right there. He had a big lineman out there in front. He just didn't wait long enough and. Eyes got big as saucers, decided to cut it back out field, but 77 out there helping him out. Third down and 10 for Southern with 2.37 to play. Jaguars really struggled on third down here today. UTSA drops its linebackers, throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. It was on the money. Dontrell Brown had it there, but just couldn't hang on. Good coverage by Stanley Dye Jr. Hey, tonight's uh, Conference USA and NCAA scoreboard brought to you by HEB. Nobody does it more. Nobody does more than HEB. That was a great throw right there by Gwen McDaniel. You gotta help the freshman out, make a play for him. Matt Gidry, fair catch called for. And caught right there at the 21 yard line. Here's our HEB scoreboard as we take a look at the scores from around the league. Arizona over UTEP big, Middle Tennessee falling to Minnesota. Coastal Carolina loses to UAB and North Texas was hanging in there. Louisiana Tech trails Western Kentucky at the half. Old Dominion, who was undefeated, loses to North Carolina. And you see Florida Atlantic big over Bethune, Cookman, and Charlotte trailing. Southern Miss over Louisiana Monroe. Houston leads Rice. 
And Marshall leading Kent State, shutting him out so far. Sturm underneath, caught. Josh Stewart coming across the middle. Josh showed up big last week, didn't he? Got into the end zone, and again, just like this guy's measurements. This is a great opportunity to run your two-minute drill. Yep. Forget oh. the score. Let's work on stuff. That's right. Low snap. Whistles blow. Ball start. 68 offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. All right. Hey, time for tonight's San Antonio Chevy Dealers UTSA team trivia question. Today's matchup, the second time UTSA has played a SWAC team. Who was the other? You want the answer now or later? Later. Give him a chance, Chuck. <laughs> Stern fires underneath. It's caught and still on his feet. Is Greg Campbell Jr. getting some blocks downfield by Brady Jones. 21-yard gain, good for a first down before Andre Augustine finally made the tackle, but UTSA going quick, 124 and counting. Ball on their own 42-yard line. Seeing if they can get points before the half. Sturm running it himself. Sturm with a crease. He's a great athlete. He shows off his running ability, picking up a first down. Danny Johnson makes the tackle. Clock stops to move the chains, but now it starts back up. Stern over the middle, Brady Jones. He's brought down, but not before another big gain of about 15 yards. Timothy Thompson on the tackle. We're inside of 50 seconds. Terrell Coy doing a really nice job, Don, on that last one, picking up the blitz. And Southern calls timeout. Timeout, Southern. UTSA's got them on their Second heels with all those kinds of momentum here. And it looks like the Roadrunners want to add more points before halftime. And you can't blame them. And again, I mean, I think we talked about this a little bit earlier. In today's world, college football, where these games seemingly flip on dimes, it's, I don't know when you call off the dogs or when you start subbing guys out. All I know is what I saw in that AM UCLA game, I never in my wildest dreams thought I would see happening in the second half. It looked like. Both teams went at halftime and switched uniforms. Yeah. I mean, so I, I don't know what you do. And then, because if you're the Aggies in that game, you've taken your foot off the gas, you're showing a little mercy, you're pounding the ball and doing whatever you want, and then the next thing you know, you can't get any of that momentum back. And the next thing you know, you're losing the game and coach's jobs are on the line. I mean, exactly it's, a, it's, right. a, it's a difficult deal, man. Almost saw Josh Rosen pull another miracle off today, but UCLA actually fell in Memphis 48-45. First and 10 for Stern. Clay comes out of the backfield. Stern looking over the middle for Stewart. Instead, he's got Kerry Thomas Jr. What an athletic play by Thomas Jr. all the way down to the 11 yard line. That infinite bravery too. He knew he was gonna take a lick and I, that's probably the best thing about this was he took a little bit of a shot. Look, he's still trying to fight for yardage. First down and 10, Sturm over the middle, Stewart. Stewart's got it, and UTSA's got another touchdown. Josh Stewart. Always open, Josh Stewart, and Dalton Sturm is having himself an afternoon, Don. Just precision, surgical performance by the UTSA offense. That's an 11-yard touchdown by Sturm. And his numbers are going to be hard to fathom. His quarterback rating is around 257 right now. <laughs> I don't think it goes that high, does it? <laughs> 257.9 to be exact. Really? After the play, a sportsmanlike conduct. 64 offense. Appealing to be forced on kickoff. That is 64's first unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Number 42. Josh Dunlop. 
with the infraction. Sophomore from Zionsville, Indiana. This Jared Sackett kid's an interesting story. Comes to UTSA as a freshman. Battles with Victor Falcone for the kicking job. Ball Went start, 73, offense. Anyway, he has a great battle with Falcone for the kicking job. Falcone gets the start. Falcone kicked well in that Baylor game. Had one block, though, that was low. But they've been battling all week in practice, and they will continue to you know, fight for these reps on a week-by-week -week basis. Sackett has done a great job coming here as a freshman walk-on, earning the spot. Oh, I'm sorry, he missed that one thing, Frank. Look good to me. Yeah, <laughs> shake his head. Well, it's between your eyes and my ears. <laughs> Dalton Stern, by the way, sets a school record with four touchdown passes in a game. He now has five today. Oh, that's four today. Yeah, and he did that. Six plays, 79 yards. Less than two, two quarters of work here on our North Star Dodge scoring summer. It's not a bad afternoon's worth of work. Yeah, one more look at the touchdown. Dalton Sturm dropping back and again. I mean, it's huge throwing lane, no duress, over the outstretched hand of the mid-level defender, and another super strike. And 80 catches it, makes it look pretty easy. I will never forget the catch he made in Aggieland last year. Josh Stewart's catch a year ago in College Station, one of the greatest catches I've ever seen at any level of football. Right up there with that Odell Beckham catch against the Cowboys. This one bounces about the 20. It's taken by Southern. and They'll have it cross the 35 to about the 37-yard line. And with only 24 seconds left, and I think Southern would be very, very happy to just take one knee and get in a locker room and lick your wounds. Dawson Odom's team thoroughly outclassed here today, but they've got SWAT conference play beginning next week. We talk about these guys have been automatic in the SWAT for many, many years. And Don, you talked about 75 guys going to the NFL and you got two NFL Hall of Famers have come from this program. Storied program, but it's been rough sledding today, no doubt. Hey, make sure you don't go anywhere. Coming up next, we got the Human Jukebox. Southern is known for their marching band, and they are one of a kind and one of the best in the entire country. And note here that this is the first time that UTSA has scored a touchdown on all of their first seven possessions. Coach Frank Wilson has to like that as we go down to Mike Lefko, who's got the coach. Thanks, Mike? guys. Coach, it was a flawless first half for you guys. What's the plan for the offense, and what do you want to see maybe out of the second team in the second half? Well, you know what happens is, you know, we're, we're, we're in different situations. We're in a two-minute drill. We do a really good job of doing that. We're in third down, medium, and in long. We're able to take advantage of that. But way too many penalties. we got to be a more disciplined football team than that. we got to aim for perfection. We're jumping off sides. We got unsportsmanlike conduct, and that is not indicative of who we are. We got to do better at those things and allow ourselves to play a complete game. All right, Coach, thank you. Thank you. John, back up to you. All right, thanks, Mike. When we come back, we'll have our halftime show. More from Mike Lefko, and more from both of these marching bands as UTSA in complete domination up 48 to nothing. You're watching college football on the City Sports Network. We're coming back with our halftime show. Martell going to be over it. there. You got to jump on that football and watch out. Making a nice play on the ball was Kirk Johnson Jr. He knew somebody had to get after it, and he was on it the whole way. Almost broke it. Deshaun Jenkins on the tackle, but that was one of those dangerous ones that can hurt you. And now we'll see how inside handoff picks up about three for Southern. Les Morrow on the tackle. 
Les, the junior from Wichita, Kansas. Making a play there, along with a couple of his buddies. TSA would love to get these guys three and out and get it back to their young offense. Another young running back in for Southern, Tevin Horland. He just dropped that one. Seventh thrown right at him, and Orton couldn't hang on to it. Anthony Hickey doing a really nice job on that play. He looked like he was going to pressure the quarterback, and then he saw the running back flash, so he stopped and kind of changed the trajectory of the pass there. Made it a little bit tougher to handle. Great recognition there on the outside to kind of mess that up. 0 for 8 on the day of third down conversions are your Southern Jaguars. They'll try to convert here with Glendon McDaniel, the freshman quarterback. He's under pressure. Watch out, he's in the end zone. Did he get out? Looked like they're going to mark it at the 1. Marcus Curry was there. Nearly had a safety. Les Morrow also there. But it looked like that McDaniel had the presence of mind to keep the ball in front of the goal line. I don't know how. That's for sure. That pocket collapsed. He just couldn't get out of his own way from one of his own guys, I should say. And then, boy, that's awfully close. That's benefit of the doubt right there. They might look at that. Yeah, it might be the, the mercy rule. I think if they would have looked at that, that would have been a safety. Gidry, session of the second half. Coach Frank Wilson and Pete Golding, the defensive coordinator, had a nice run guys in and out. Substitution thing going in the first half. We'll see who plays in the second when we come back. Welcome back to the Alamo Dome. UTSA, Coach Frank Wilson, with a dominating performance here, 48 to nothing over the Southern Jaguars and UTSA's home opener. Of course, they didn't get to play Houston in week one. They upset Baylor in week two. And as we heard Coach Wilson before halftime saying that he was trying to find perfection and they've had some penalties that he would like to have back. But I tell you what, Chuck, there has been almost perfection with his quarterback, Dalton Sturm, in that offense. Yeah, I mean, when anytime you can get 399 yards of total offense and then we're not even talking about what the defense did. I mean, Southern had 40 total yards. That's it in the first half. So they had 140 last week against Southern Miss. Obviously, we've talked about how banged up they are, and it's rough when you lose your three-year starter at quarterback to injury. And you got to roll a couple freshmen out there. You can start with that. But not to mention you got your star running backs also out. But make no mistake about it, this UTSA defense is absolutely legit. Just ask the Baylor Bears. No question about it as Kirk Johnson Jr. awaits the kick. Johnson will run this one down right at about the two yard line. He's got lots of speed. Watch out, Kirk Johnson Jr. gets hit from the side at about the 26 yard line. There's Kyle McGregor there to make a nice tackle, but that's where UTSA will set up shot, a 25 yard return. And we are gonna see the young Bryce Rivers. Chuck, we called his game over at Stevens High School when he played there, and now he'll be taking snaps with that UTSA second team offense. Yeah, really curious to see, as I know the UTSA coaching staff is, to see how this true freshman responds under his first game action. The southpaw fires, got a man, and it's Blaze Moorhead. And he's one for one. <laughs> Andre Augustine. There to make the tackle. Another like first down. 20-yard gain for Bryce Rivers. Not an easy throw, obviously. Running out there to his left. Throws a strike there right on the run. It's all that good baseball skill he got coming up, too. That's when I first got a chance to see him, Don, and I'll tell that story as we go along. Brett Winnigan in it running back. And the freshman running for his life. Loses about 20. And tonight's third quarter of CSN football brought to you by Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. 
with three locations in San Antonio. It's just a fantastic play by Joe Davis staying home on that last play. Reading that one all the way. Did not bite on the play fake. Did what he was coached to do and then finished it off. Second and 25 for Rivers. A little shuffle pass to Winnegan. Winnegan gets about 10 of it back. Across the 40, short of the 44. That'll set up third and long. Calvin Lunkins with the tackle. We've got a, a look at a lot of new faces in there for this Roadrunner offense. Marquez McNeil is in. Remember, UTSA is perfect on third down conversions. No pressure, freshman. Fires it out to Winnegan. Winnegan gets outside, and he gets to about the 48, well short of the first down, about eight yards short. And so for the first time today, we'll see the UTSA punting game. Demario Houston with the tackle. And Yanni Rutsis will be on to punt it away. Yeah, seven for seven, as we said, marching up and down the field in the first half. So Yanni Rutsis was... Well, they're watching like the rest of us. They finally get a chance to air one out here. Rutus was really good last year. Very solid when called upon. One of the best in Conference USA. Gets off another good kick that bounces right about the 18. It bounces backwards. And that's where Southern will have it. Down 48 to nothing. It'll be interesting to see their personnel units. This will be their first possession of the second half. Coach Frank Wilson and Pete Golding, the defensive coordinator, had a nice run guys in and out substitution thing going in the first half. We'll see who plays in the second when we come back. Welcome back to the Alamo Dome, everybody. The UTSA defense in with some new faces that we'll try to keep track of here as we watch Southern take over at their own 22. And I'm sure Southern's saying, I see double nickel still in there. What's up with that? <laughs> They're not going to let everybody off the hook as Jamar Washington comes to the right-hand side. Andrew Martell in its safety makes a nice tackle. Hey, all second half replays are presented by Thomas J. Henry. When your family needs help, call Thomas J. Henry 24-7, nights and weekends. We talked about this UTSA defense, Don, repeatedly. I think the coolest thing that's happened here is they've not only got players on the field, they're starting to stack them with these backups too. So we're going to see some athletes still kicking it out here. Deep ball is caught. Pass interference. Penalty flies, but Jamar Washington with the catch anyway. Tonight's second half scoreboard is sponsored by Six Flags Freight Fest. Try saying that three times fast. Pass interference, defense number 26. A penalty is declined. First down. First down for Southern. Nice throw by McDaniel to Washington. coverage on the play there by Grant Marka, junior transfer from Elgin, Texas. A little slant there again is Washington. And that time is Brendan Johnson with the coverage. He's a freshman red shirt from Waco. A lot of these guys getting their first snaps, big time college football. You know, they're loving this. Chance to make an early name for yourself and something on tape for the coaches to look at, hopefully in a positive way. Houston's Dequarius Henry, number 45 in at defensive end, as is Eric Banks. Inside handoff. And then Ben with the carry. Franklin Yusey with the tackle. Yeah, I think this Ben kid has showed up nicely. You know, it hasn't been Easy sledding, running through the gaps up there, but he's he's had some nice, tough runs here today. He's got it again, and this time coming up to make another nice tackle for the second time is Martell. We've got two on this drive. 
probably will see this third and fourth quarter fly by. Both teams will probably be happy to run this football and run this clock. But they also want to get a good look at all these different personnel for both squads. The coaches do. See what it looks like in the film room. This is the first time that Southern has made it across midfield. That ball's tipped and almost intercepted by Martell. I did not see who got a hand up over there, but no question. The trajectory of the ball was knocked off its course at the line of scrimmage. Menard was the intended receiver. Let's take a look. Oh, never mind. He just threw a Mikatinic pass. Lost the ears. 0 for 7 on third down conversions on the day are the Southern Jaguars. Yeah, three first downs in the first half. A little more continuity on this drive, but here they are facing third and long again. That one's high. Martell's going to pick it off. Two tackles and near Oski and now a pick. He's taking the ball with him. We got a flag too after the play, and Coach Wilson's not going to be happy about that. Could be coming back for. That was after the After play. the interception, personal foul, 31, defense. Half this is goal, first down. All right, so Lakel Bass maybe got a little energetic with a block afterwards, and he's getting an earful from. Frank Wilson. Yeah, he got a little nudge on the quarterback after the ball was away. And it's exactly what he was talking about going into halftime. I mean, those are the kinds of things that you got to clean up as you go forward, but got to like the spirit. All UTSA, 48 nothing from the dome. UTSA with a first down here back in the Alamo Dome, backed up to their own eight yard line. Quarterbacking is the freshman Bryce Rivers from San Antonio. Lennigan's got it. He's got the 20, 21 before he's finally pushed out. Montavious Gaines with the tackle. Seeing some other San Antonians in there. I'd see a Stevens to Stevens throw as Rivers is in along with Larry Stevens. First down, Winnegan. Brett Winnegan, you know, he showed us some sparks last year at times. He was a good punt returner, kick returner. Now he's getting some time at the running back spot. Yeah, I mean, he looks good, and so do those big guys up front where they've made some changes. I saw him clearing a path. Looking forward maybe to seeing uh, BJ, BJ Daniels, the highly recruited player out of Florida. Big running back. Here's Winnegan on a stretch, and the Southern defense wipes that out for a loss. Yeah, Aaron Tiller, senior defensive end from Columbus, Ohio, doing a really nice job holding the edge and really blowing that thing up early. Dalton oh. Stern's going to end the night 19 of 22 for 292 yards and four touchdowns passing. He also ran for one. So the passer rating at 257.9 will stick. As Rivers rolls left and fires deep for Cavill and is picked off. Timothy Thompson down the sidelines. He's scoring. Danny Johnson, touchdown, Southern. There is a flag down. Well, when you're talking about this Southern defense, Don, it starts and ends with this young man, Danny Johnson. I mean, he's all world and you just can't say enough good things about this guy, not only as a ball player, but as a student athlete. I mean, he's a Walter Payton Award recipient, 3.4 in the classroom, three-year starter, pro talent, as you said off the top. And there's a man downfield, 77 offense. That penalty's declined. 
touchdown. All right, so that's his 12th career pick. Wow. Last year he had seven. He said this year he wanted to get 12. <laughs> He's off to a good start. Well, Look at that, nice closing speed, and then just the vision, and then letting those blocks set up. Thought he was going to cut it back, but just outstanding vision. Make that thing and turn it into a pick six. Great wall of blockers. And the extra point is good. And the Southern Jaguars are on the board. 48 to 7. Frank Wilson wants to talk it over with his young quarterback, and we'll be back with more football here from the Alamo Dome. Martell's going to be get over it. there. You got to jump on that football and watch out. Making a nice play on the ball was Kirk Johnson Jr. First varsity snaps here. And here's the first ever UTSA carry by B.J. Daniels. Here he is again, and he's pops it again for another eight or ten yards. Two carries and two big runs before Benjamin Harris brings him down. Chuck, this is what we talked about when Frank Wilson took over this program with his connections to Mississippi and Florida and the South as LSU's recruiting coordinator. He was eventually going to get some of these guys, and B.J. Daniels might be the best of the bunch. And I think the conversation went something like this. Wait, young man, you're from Florida, and you're going to go play ball in the snow in Syracuse? I know they play indoors, but it's cold up there, and that's about all it took to convince them, I guess. <laughs> Good tough run there for about two, and you know the running backs here have been 5'8", 5'9", 6'2". Taking a block there as the ball is completed from Rivers to Larry Stevens. Daniels in the backfield. Stevens and McNair, they're going to throw it to Daniels out of the backfield. He can't quite break a tackle, and he will come up a little bit short. He tried to cut it back, but that's the difference between high school football and college football, the speed of the defense, and that's a learning experience right there. Well, you know, you have a jailbreak. Everybody on the uh, southern side's coming after the quarterback. Bryce made the right read there. Get it to your outlet guy. Just a better play on the outside with a one-on-one -on -one tackle to bring him down. Danny Johnson, who scored on the interception, is back to receive the punt from Yanni Rutsis, who is going to kick it over his head. Instead, he calls for the fair catch inside the 10-yard line right there at about the 6. So a nice kick by Rutsis, as they always play on national TV once or twice a year. Inside handoff, picks up about 3 for Southern. Another young running back in for Southern, Tevin Horland. He just dropped that one with Glendon McDaniel, the freshman quarterback. He's under pressure. Watch out. He's in the end zone. Did he get out? Looked like they're going to mark it at the one. I think if they would have looked at that, that would have been a safety. Gidry on the run. Takes it right at the 30, and it'll be great field position for that Roadrunner offense. There's nothing like game experience, so this is really going to prove beneficial for him. Here's Daniels hitting the hole, spinning off, still on his feet near the 20 before Danny Johnson brings him down. But there you can see what they love about V.J. Daniels, the freshman. UTSA fans, these are your future runners here with Rivers, a freshman at quarterback, a true freshman. Daniels is a true freshman at the tailback spot. He's got it again. And look at him move that pile. Down to the five. Pazlucci over there on the left side. Freshman. Some young guys, but they are stout. Jamal Tillman on the tackle. And there's no question that the improvement in UTSA football is directly tied with the quality of athlete that you can recruit when you're playing in Conference USA and when you have a coach with the recruiting ability of a Frank Wilson. Rivers on a boot, fires off McNair's hands and out of bounds. The Ganzel duo in there, 73, 6'5", 330. Where do they find these guys? <laughs> a little tougher for the lefty rolling out to his right. The defender got a little bit of a finger on that, able to knock it away. and. 
These snaps are big, too, for the field goal kicking team because, as you alluded to, they did have one blocked last week. So, see if they can Falcone make this happen. had it blocked. That's why Sackett's got a chance, and he splits the uprights. And the freshman, another freshman, putting points on the board. He's been perfect today as UTSA now has hung half a hundred, as Barry Switzer used to say. UTSA's got Texas State next week, but they got leak play coming up, and you want to be firing on all cylinders when you get that going on. Here's Jamar Washington. Instead, he'll take a knee. Now, this is a tough, tough defense to go up against when you're trying to break in some young quarterbacks, to say the least. Look Ball's out. on the ground. Southern's got it back. Another one of those miscommunications, and it looks like McDaniel was came up grabbing that right arm. And again, I mean, these guys are bowing up for SWAT play. I mean, they were 8-3 and three last year, second in the conference. And, you know, it's got to get better, but it will when they get more healthy. And it's just been, it's been hard to find the silver lining in this one, though, today. 0 for 9 now on third down conversions. Here's McDaniel running for his life. Wanted to run it. Instead, he's buried right at the 25-yard line. Morris Joseph, Jr. He was another one that Frank Wilson was excited to see get some snaps today. Another one of those good recruits. And you see Lee run off the field, and he's just really kind of taking a beating here today. If there is some good news, it is that Southern may have solved their punting question today. As Merritt has done a nice job there. Gidry's muffed it. Southern may score. He's still running. That's a dead ball. But they, got re they get the ball back. Can't return it. Elijah Allen. Yeah, and they had one of those last week. You know, we talked about UTSA special teams, especially last year, how many great things they did and how many opportunities they created for themselves on special teams, both covering kicks and returning kicks. And some of the junk that they pull with gadget plays and the like. But now this is the second week in a row now that they've had a muff punt, and I know they're not going to be happy about that. They got to change that rule. You got to be able to return them off. Not that I'm, you know, pulling for Southern or anything. But <laughs> doesn't make sense on any other possession. Ball fired over the middle, caught. Near a first down. As UTSA continues to go with it's second unit on defense. That one completed to Dylan Beard. And that's the end of the quarter. That'll take us to zeros with UTSA up 51-7. to seven, A complete dominating performance. Dalton Sturman, the offense, has been great. The defense just as great. We're coming back with the fourth quarter right after this. It's a UTSA tradition to come and take it flag. And the fourth quarter. All the fourth quarter action tonight on the Citywide Sports Network, presented by IHOP. Eat up every moment. Number nine, first down. All right, a chance for this young defense, some of these young guys getting a chance to play. See if they can pick up the special teams after the botch. Keep them out of the end zone. First down and 10. And look out, here comes that UTSA defense. Busted through there, Devontre Walker, Les Morrow, and Morris Joseph Jr. They're really high on Joseph. That was a, hey, let's have a meeting at the quarterback and 
Let's get there in like two seconds. <laughs> Mercy, complete collapse of the offensive line on that one. It's just showing blitz again. Firing out here and upended. Nice tackle there. Randall Menard, the receiver. And on the tackle is Clayton Johnson. Young man from Flower Mound, Texas. Number 12 showing up too. He's having a really nice game, isn't he? Got a pick. Markel. Double tack it. Tackle. Yeah. Need I remind you that now we are in double digits for a third down conversion tries for Southern. 0 for 10 at this point. This is third and 12. Ball to UTSA 24. On the move for the first time, any sort of threat, and look out. Nowhere to go as UTSA's defense with another jailbreak. Les Morrow there as well as Marcus Curry. Negative four on that play as Joshua Booker Brown also gets in there. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to see who was the first guy in here, but really disrupted it by getting a hand out there. He stayed after that. That was 41. All right. Booker Brown, Caesar Barajas going to try a 45-yarder. Almost had it blocked. One is long enough. And it's right down the middle. Nice kick from Caesar Barajas. And so Southern now in double digits. 51 to 10. The Roadrunners get the ball back when we come back to the Alamo Dome. Time for our North Star Dodge scoring summary. Took six plays. How about a nice kick from Cesar Barajas, 45 yards. Took up 234 off the clock. Only a five-yard drive. Barajas with a great kick down the middle to put the Jaguars into double digits. Yeah, and I think more than anything else, kudos to the UTSA defense for picking up the special teams after the muff and holding them to three. Absolutely. Here's a short kick. Taken by the fullback. And now it's time to answer our trivia question, the San Antonio Chevy Dealers UTSA team trivia question. Saturday's matchup here against Southern, the second time that UTSA has played a team from the SWAC. Who was the first team? Chuck? I said Alabama State. That's what I was thinking, but you are correct, sir. Well, let me tell you. Here's the deal, Don. I'm sure you know that I was probably the dumbest guy in my class growing up. So I, whenever I had the right answer to something, which was never, I never got to raise my hand. So when you were asking the trivia question earlier, I got excited because I thought I knew the answer to that. You should have. You called the game. I did? <laughs> <laughs> Here's B.J. Daniels for a nice game. And, Very you know, good. I know there are some people probably saying, oh, yeah, UTSA, you're beating up on... A little FCS team today, but quite frankly, th that was the last FCS team they've played. There haven't been a whole lot of these. You know, they did it, and that was 2012. So we're talking five seasons ago. So UTSA really, their scheduling has been really, it's been really brutal, their non-conference schedule these last few years, as we all know. They've not had many of these teams that they could, you know, kind of come out and have a scrimmage situation here in the second half. And they've taken advantage of it today. I mean, the last thing they wanted to do was come into this game overconfident, not do what they needed to do. I think they did that for the most part, and they've taken advantage of the situation for what it is. They were absolutely surgical offensively. I mean, the defense is great. Uh, they were they dominated, but that that offense and those numbers that Stern put up and that just the way they converted. It doesn't matter if you're playing against air. It's hard to do what they did. They were dialed in today. Nair in motion. Rivers guns out to win again. That's tipped. Watch out. That's picked. Second interception of the day for Bryce Rivers. And it was intercepted by Jordan Williams, who just really had it fall right into his lap after he was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's a tough one because now your defense comes back on the field, but. Obviously, it would take a miracle for Southern at this point to even get back in this football game, but they give credit where credit's due. Big fella's got to eat, and not many times that you know, a big fella like Jordan Williams, a linebacker, is going to get a shot at a football, and 
A young sophomore from Lafayette, Louisiana, made the most of his opportunity right there. He sure did. And that gives the ball back to the Southern Jaguars here with 11 minutes to play in the ball game. UTSA bringing the house. They fire the slant and it's caught short of a first down. Jamar Washington on the catch. And you were talking about how precision like the UTSA offense was today, but you know, honestly for Southern, hey, no shame not doing much against this UTSA defense. I mean, again, just stunning work a week ago against a team like Baylor. And even Coach Wilson said, you know, if you'd have told me before that game started that we would have only given up 10 points and honestly they were lucky to get their touchdown, he would have been shot. But he was really proud of the fact that his squad didn't give up a whole lot of big plays, if any, just, you know, on the touchdown. And the secondary stood up and made him make contested catches, which isn't easy to do with as athletic as Baylor is outside. Just a resounding performance on that side of the football a week ago and today. UTSA jumped off sides there as Tevin Horton carries. Number 23, Tevin Horton with the carry there. He said, I can promise you one thing. We will never, ever be a team that will be intimidated. Not by Baylor, not by U of H, not by anybody. And he really feels like this program can be one of those fledgling dynasties like Baylor and U of H, where they kind of made their hay in this decade. Yeah, you see what they did last year. They went into Kyle Field, and that was a good football game at the half. And I watched the entire game, and without a couple of possessions here, yet, here or there, they could have gotten out of there with a W. Holding. 80 offense, 10-yard penalty, still first down. And they also had a win yeah. uh, that was possible right here in the Alamo Dome against Arizona uh, that they let him off the hook early in, the, in the, his first year. But I think that's what was so cool about last week because they still hadn't done it. They'd been in some games, some yeah. big games against power fives. But to get a big drive when you needed it on offense and a huge stop on defense to end the game, that's got to build confidence going forward. Blitz coming, and Curry almost got there. Instead, it's complete, but well short of the first down to Tevin Horton. And Coach Wilson was saying, hey, man, it's, we had respect for those schools, for U of H and Baylor. But I know internally that they really felt like they had a good, if not great, chance to knock off both. U of H yeah. and knocking off both. That's exactly right. That's the confidence that this program is playing with right now. And why not? The, the athletes are better, and Frank has instilled a incredible organizational approach. And look at that catch for the Oski. Anthony Hickey. That's one of those jugs machine drills. It was fired at him at about 90 miles an hour, and he was able not only to tip it, Usually you see that ball tipped. Instead, he was able to snatch it out of midair. Not only that, against the grain of his momentum. How about that? We're coming right back to the dome. The young man Hickey with the interception, giving UTSA the ball back at their 20 yard line. Brett Winnigan in it running back. Look at this in real time. Just cat quick skills. Ball's loose here on first down. Southern may have recovered it. Well, the official coming in saying he was down. Sean Jenkins thought he had the football. Well, he is down. Disaster. He is down, but it's after the recovery. And it's a Southern first down. Well, the good news is your young defense gets some more looks, but it's been a really, really rough quarter for the backups for UTSA. Bryce just could not find the ears and then it's a mad scramble to try to get the football back. Ah, uh, the growing pains of being a freshman quarterback. Yeah, and then you got the young line, a lot of moving parts and you know, they'll have some stuff to work on this week for sure. Rivers in fact comes right over here on the bench to work with his center on the snap. 
You know, that's the thing that drives Frank nuts more than anything is the turnovers. I mean, the first thing out of his mouth about what he was so pleased about with Dalton Sturm last week was the fact that he protected the football, and he did that again today, too, with no turnovers. Southern wants to strike on first down, throwing it to the corner and incomplete. Randall Menard, the intended receiver. 8.26 to go here in the fourth. Sets up second down and 10. Yeah, really good coverage here by Brendan Johnson running stride for stride with the wide receiver down the sideline. Not a whole lot of space between defender and receiver on that throw. Daniel calling the shots here, getting the formation that he wants. Still got about six seconds to get it off as UTSA shows blitz. Run it to the left-hand side. Watch out. Down the corner. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tevin Horton got to the corner and just outraced everybody to the stick. Boy, did he get a block outside. And if you're Frank Wilson, as you start preparing for Texas State, you're not too upset about these because this will help you focus going into Texas State week because it's not going to be a, a perfect game. It's going to be a lot of film watching and you know what, chewing as they get ready for the Bobcats next week. Hey, we're coming back to the Alamo Dome with UTSA leading 51-17. to We've got eight minutes to go in the ballgame. Welcome back, Coach Dawson Odoms. Team now with 17 points on the board. Horton capped off the two-play drive after another UTSA turnover. That is our North Star Dodge scoring summary. As Winnegan's back deep. Along with Kevin Johnson Jr. It's kicked his way. Down the sideline, and he's forced out of bounds right there as we take a look at our college football scoreboard brought to you by HEB. Nobody does more than HEB. Arizona huge over UTEP. You see Minnesota a big win. UAB beat Coastal Carolina. And Iowa beat the mighty Mean Green 31-14. to Well, that was a game for a while now. Carolina over Old Dominion. Florida Atlantic with a shutout over Bethune-Cookman. North Carolina A&T, close over Charlotte. And good one there at Western Kentucky. Yeah, La Tech, everybody thinking was going to win their division. The UTSA's in. And I think we got news for everybody that the runners are going to have a lot to say about that. And, Don, I know we've talked about this on other shows and other programs. As good and as storied as La Tech is, and they are, we know they lost an awful lot off of last year's team. Both their receivers are now in the NFL. Their star quarterback graduated. Some of those studs they had on defense are now in the NFL. I'm thinking we're going to have one heck of a Conference USA season this year. Western Kentucky always good in that other division as well. That's a good ball game. There's Daniels. Daniels. Who did they say, Chuck, that they uh, compared him to? Matt Forte? Or? Well, yeah, Selfo had Forte at Tulane, and that's who he reminds him of. And Coach Wilson had the blue kid from Alfred LSU. Blue. That's Alfred right. Blue. That was yeah. with the Texans. So both of those names came up when talking about double threes over there. Yeah, B.J. Daniels is has that size, has that toughness, and has the speed. And you see some of that toughness there as he pulls forward for a yard. Hey, following the game, stay with us for the John Wayne Services postgame show. San Antonio's home service company. We'll have the stats, the interviews, the highlights, and much more. That's the John Wayne home services postgame show coming up after the game. So UTSA fails to convert, so they'll have to punt it away here with Nearer six minutes to go. Danny Johnson, an electric athlete who's already got a touchdown today, waiting for that punt off the foot of Yanni Rutsis. And 
Roots is, gets it away. What nice, beautiful spiral is going to bounce at the 10. It'll be touched down right there at the 12. That's the best punt I've seen from Roots is two seasons. Just a gorgeous rocket off his right foot. Yeah, and the best part about that, they snapped it with one second left on the play clock. That's right. 51-17 when we come back. Welcome back to the Alamo Dome. UTSA still in total control. 51 to 17 over the Southern Jaguars, but Chuck Southern puts up more points than Baylor did. <laughs> I guess there's a silver lining right there, that's for sure. First down and 10 for the Jaguars. As I say, that's not even looking at the glass half full. You just kind of blew the glass up right there. <laughs> nice tough carry there by the Jags. Another carry for about five yards by Horton. Think about where this program has come, losing to McMurray State, to beating Baylor. And, and as much as the team that Larry Coker had in his last year where they were talking about this is the year we get over, they were picked high and they were going to make a bowl game and they kind of disappointed down the stretch. By far, this is the most talented UTSA team we've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, but those Coker teams, remember, had a lot of quarterback injuries, too. So they got it kind of stacked against them. But, hey, make no mistake about it, Larry Coker's footprint is all over this program. I mean, a lot of these are his guys. Yeah, a lot of these are his guys. But, you know, a lot of the guys that were here when he started, like Davenport, has come such a long way. For being sure. A senior. And yeah. so that's what I'm saying is that talent level, when you got Davis at one corner, Jupy at the other corner, Tau F in the middle, and Kevin Strong and and uh, and Davenport on the line. You know, you're looking at maybe two, maybe three of those guys with a, a legitimate chance of making it in the next level. Yeah. And th these are the talent that is on the field for UTSA is by far the most they've ever had. Well, not only that, I mean, you talk about depth on the field. The depth of this coaching staff has never been greater than what it was, or yeah, than what Davis it is right now. from Alabama? No, correct. And not only that, the NFL. And Selfo, who was in the NFL. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I mean, he's, he's making us better. And he shares, which is nice. Second down and 11. Horton, he's been a nice job for the Jaguars tonight. Chuck, who's your guest for our player of the game? Is the Air Force Federal Credit Union sponsoring our player of the game? And well, see, that wouldn't have else? been my guess. Sturm? No, I was going to give it to Hickey. I thought the interception, because it's like, I don't know, man. Dalton sure made it look easy. I think anytime you go 19 for 22 with four touchdowns and a passer rating of nearly 260, All right. it's hard to. I'll give you that. That's a, it's got to be the most complete game of well, his that's, career. That's here. players of the game. That's plays of the game, I should say. I yeah. thought we were doing play of the game. Oh, that was players? Sorry. Player <laughs> of the game. I can't read and I can't hear. <laughs> Surprising no one. Well, they got North Texas on the, the following week after that, and then Rice and UTEP. It's got to take them one at a time because they're all going to be big once league play starts. North Texas has really improved. We saw that last year with Seth Luttrell coaching there. That ball's going to turn over and bounce inside the 10-yard line. This thing may roll down all the way down to the 7. No, but they're going to be looking to do some more, more of the same. I mean, it's been, for the starters, it's been clockwork done in two straight ball games. Whether you're playing a team from the FCS or a team from the Big 12, this has been one heck of a start for UTSA in 2017 under Coach Wilson. We've talked about the defense today. They set another record with 149 total yards for Southern. That's the fewest total yards allowed in UTSA history. And the final stats of tonight's game are brought to you by South Texas Ford dealers. And Chuck, not a surprise, this one was all Roadrunners. 504 total yards to 149, which is a record-setting performance by that defense. Yeah, and let's not forget that UTSA had 399 totals yard, total yards of offense in the first half alone. So, you know, they did most of their work in the first two quarters, got some valuable game time for some of these younger players, and 
you never know. I mean, it's a long football season. you got to rely on your backups at some point. So a lot of things UTSA was able to accomplish today in this football game. Great football performance by the UTSA Roadrunners. And just enough from Frank Wilson, just enough sloppy play for him to have something to coach for this week. Hey, we'd like to thank our executive producers, Bob Wills, Jim Goodman, Smiley Garcia. The director today was A.J. Godinez. Chuck Mikatinik and Mike Lefko down on the field. This is Don Harris telling you, catch us back next week on the CW35, and then we'll see you with more games throughout the year right here on the Citywide Sports Network.